it's time to use vertex array objects or also called VAOs. So let's go to learnopengl.com into the hello triangle. And if you scroll down, you will find uh, explanation about vertex array object here or object. So vertex array objects, also known as VAO, can be bound just like a vertex buffer object and any subsequent vertex attribute calls from that point on will be stored inside a VAO. This has the advantage uh, that when configuring vertex attribute pointers, you only have to make those calls once and whenever we want to draw the object, we can just bind the corresponding VAO. This makes switching between different vertex data and attribute configurations as easy as binding a different VAO. All the state we just set is stored inside a VAO, inside a VAO. So I'm going to add this link to the video description. Uh, you can also just Google vertex OpenGL and vertex array objects or OpenGL VAOs. So as you can see, here is a picture. So here is a VAO one, and it stores the attribute pointer zero one to attribute pointer fifteen, um, which sets the VBOs attributes and so on. So. I'm just going to show you in code. So I already typed out everything and I'm just going to briefly explain what's happening. So we have this scene. We now have three type of uh, geometries. We have this cube using this uh, create that texture. I mean create the create that JPEG texture. We have this plane or quad and which, which is rotating around the x axis x axis and it uses this cat that PNG image. And we have the third geometry which is this uh, triangle which is colored to red uh, green and blue so first i'm going to show you how to create the vao itself but before i go go to the vao now as you can see we have three type of geometries so we have we need to have three buffers for each uh, geometry so the first buffer is the cube vertices and the cube vertices has just vertex one vertex with XYZ, then it's UV. The second vertex XYZ and it's UV and so on and so forth. So this cube has 24 vertices or six faces. Here is its indices, so the cube indices. Then the quad vertices. So now we have on one quad, so one face. So XYZ, UV, XYZ, UV, and so on and so forth. And also the quad indices or the index buffer for the quad. Then lastly, the last geometry we have is the triangle, and the triangle has three vertices, so X, Y, Z, and three colors, red, green, blue. Then next vertex, X, Y, Z, and its color, so red, green, blue. And for the triangle, I didn't create an indices or index buffer, uh, just to show you that it can be done uh, mixed. So you can create geometries with indices, and you can create geometries without indices, just to create uh, when you want to use uh, GLDRAW arrays. So, of course, here I'm just generating an umpire array from the triangle vertices. And now here is the cube VAO. So to actually create a vertex array object, you can call it, you can call the GLGen vertex arrays. So now we are, we are generating only one vertex array called the cube VAO. It generates a, an, an ID. Then we need to bind this uh, vertex array. And any, as it says here, uh, any subsequent subsequent vertex attribute calls so these are these subsequent vertex attribute calls will be stored inside the currently bound VAO which is now this cube VAO so it will store this GL bind uh, buffer array buffer and it will also store this GL bind uh, element array buffer and all these vertex attribute settings so these is these are for the um, for the positions and these are these two lines are for the texture coordinates so technically when you when you create or bind a vertex uh, bind vertex array you should unbind it like this uh, i just commented it out so gl bind vertex array with zero but because opengl is a state machine you don't have to explicitly unbind it because in the next vert bind vertex array it will automatically unbind this one so here is the quad VAO. I, separate, I created three separate VAOs. So one is for the uh, cube VAO, one is for the quad VAO, and here I'm binding the quad VAO. And after this bind, everything will be stored in the quad VAO. I mean this array buffer, this uh, bind buffer, element array buffer, not the actual data. The actual data won't isn't stored in the 
vertex artery, I mean the um, vertex array object, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the only thing is, which, which is stored is the currently the bound, VBO, the bound, EBO, and the uh, vertex artery pointer settings for the for the positions and also for the texture coordinates. And here is the last VAO, which is a triangle VAO, also GLGen vertex is one We bind here the triangle VAO to actually store these settings inside the triangle VAO. And as you can see, the triangle VAO doesn't have an element buffer object because we just we just won't draw it using GL draw elements, but we are going to draw it with GL draw arrays. So and now uh, the enable vertex of three array zero where the positions are. So we are setting here the positions and enable ver vertex of three array two. So I created here in the vertex shader uh, layered qualifier location two, which is which are the attribute colors, which is a type of vector three. And where I was here in the triangle. So now I am enabling uh, the layout location two and I'm setting the colors for the lay layout location two. So the so this will be stored inside the triangle VAO. And now here I'm creating two textures. One texture is for the cube and one texture is for the quad. So let's go here. Here I'm creating three positions, one for the cube, one for the quad, one for the triangle. So the cube is moved x1, the quad is moved x negative one, and the triangle is moved y1 and z negative one, or translated. Here everything stays the same, but now uh, in the fragment shader I created a new uniform called switcher. I'm going to show you why uh, I created it. So here I'm getting its position or its location from the fragment fragment shader. And uh, in, let's go to the main application loop. So now I'm going to talk about this soon. So now if I want to draw the cube, I just have to bind the vertex array of cube VAO, then just bind its texture, set uh, the model, its model uniform and draw the cube using draw elements. Then just create a new model matrix, bind the quad VAO, bind its texture, set its model matrix and using the GL draw elements draw the quad. And lastly, here is a new model matrix for the triangle and here I'm binding the triangle VAO. I'm going to talk about this soon. Uh, setting the model location for the triangle or the model matrix for the triangle. And now because the triangle is just a simple array, it doesn't have any indices. I'm just calling here the, here the GL draw arrays instead of the GL draw elements. So I just wanted to show you that you can mix these two so you can create buffers with indices and use the GL draw elements or you can just create buffers without uh, index buffer or element uh, buffer object and just use the GL draw arrays. And now let's talk about what I changed inside the shader, why I'm using here this uni uh, GL uniform 1i switcher location 1 and here also GL uniform 1i switcher location and 0. So let's go to the first to the vertex shader. Now as you can see uh, I created three layout locations or layout qualifiers. The first is a vector 3 of, of uh, attribute position, the second is a vector 2 attribute uh, texture and the third is a vector 3 attribute color and this is used by the triangle. So these two are used by the cube and the plane and the last use is used by the triangle. So here I'm creating an output vector of uh, varying color or V underscore color and in the main function I'm setting the varying color equal to the attribute or the input color. So that's way it will be passed from the vertex shader to the fragment shader. So in, in the in the fragment shader I have an input vector uh, v underscore color. So this comes from from here, and here I have this uniform of type int called switcher. And don't forget you cannot use the word uh, switch because a switch is a wizard uh, keyword in GLSL. So just call it switcher. And yeah, so in the main function, now I'm drawing based on, on the value of the switcher. So if the switcher is equal to zero, then the out color will be the output of the texture function. And as if the switcher equals one, 
and the out color will be the vector 4 of varying color and 1 for the alpha. So that's why we change the switcher inside the application loop. So when I want to draw the cube and the quad, I'm setting the switcher to 0. So as you can see, when it, when it is 0, then it will use the texture function uh, as to generate the output. And when the switcher here is set to 1, then it will use, it will go to the else if, where switcher is 1, and it will create the output color based on the varying color and the alpha is set to 1. So this is how you can just change the output based on, if you want to have like this one, so where I have uh, two textured textured 3D meshes and one without textures, just simply colored. So you have to have some kind of a switch uh, or a switcher uh, thing, which is just an integer and you can use it like this. You can set it like this. And just let me show you how to, if you, if you don't create VAOs, you can, technically you can draw multiple geometries without creating vertex array objects. And here is a code. Uh, here I'm drawing, I'm going to show you, here I'm dra drawing two types of geometries, one is a cube and one is a, a quad or a plane, and without using vertex array objects. But the downside of this one is, if you go, if you go to the application loop, now as you can see, in every draw call, before I draw, let's say, the cube, I need to bind the cube buffer, with the GL bind, GL array buffer, cube VBO, then bind its element array buffer, so the cube EBO. I have to enable the vertex attribute array at uh, location 0, set the vertex attribute pointer at location 0, then enable the vertex attribute array at location 1, set the vertex attribute array at location 1, and then bind the texture for the cube, then set the model matrix for the cube, and then draw the cube. And the same goes for the plane or the quad. I have to bind its VBO, I have to bind its element buffer object or EBO, I have to set its uh, vertex attribute pointers uh, for the positions, I have to set its uh, vertex attribute pointers also for the texture coordinates. So as you can see, just to draw, just to draw, let's say, the cube, I have six lines here before I can bind the texture, set the uniform and draw it. So six more lines of code for each 3D mesh. And as you can see, this is for the cube and six GL calls for the quad. So, and, and if you are using VAO, so vertex array objects, we just can bind the vertex VAO and we can then just bind this texture, set it uniform and draw it. So this is four lines to draw a cube. And this is actually six plus three, so nine lines to draw the cube. Here it is four lines to draw the quad. Here it is nine lines to draw the quad. So it is much, much more simpler to use a vertex array object than not use it. And as you can see, this is a bunch of GL calls in the application loop. So if you have, let's say, 100 types of geometries and each geometry needs to have these, all these bindings, when you are, of course, when you are not using uh, a VAO, then it means for each, for when I mean, you have 100 geometries, it means six times 100, so 600 or GL calls just for uh, displaying 100 uh, geometries. So that's why we are going from now on. We are just going to use uh, vertex array objects, and that that's why it is uh, absolutely useful to use.